My name's Rene Rodarte. I'm here with Brian Watson. We're here at NACE 2015. We're here on the show floor. We're doing some interactive demonstrations. We're destructively testing welds. We're talking welding technique and inspection of welds. So I leaned on Brian right here. He's our subject matter expert. He's our performance training coordinator when, uh, when it comes to welding. He's also a technician. Less than a year ago, Brian was in a stall fixing BMWs, Audis. He's a certified technician with a lot of hands-on experience. So uh, Brian, could you tell us a little bit about what we're, what we're seeing here at the, at, the show to, at the show these past couple of days and what we're doing? Thank you, Renee. Well, as a technician, it's a lot harder to see exactly what the weld is doing just by the face of it. Now, if you look at these two welds, they pretty much look identical, and they both look like good welds. But we don't actually know what the weld, the whole profile of the weld looks like until we look at the backside. And on the backside of these two welds, you can actually see that one has a definite heat mark and the other one does not. Well, we don't have this option of seeing the backside of the weld in a repair process a lot of time, because this could be inside of a frame rail, and we might not be able to see that. The interesting thing about these two welds is I kept the, the welder settings exactly the same for both these welds. All I did is change the way I welded it. One I welded on the outside, and the other one I did a little co more concentration on the inside. So Renee, let's destructive test these and see what happens. All right. So this first point. one, all I did was weld on the outside of the perimeter of the hole, and we'll see how that turns out. Tell how easy that was to break. That was real easy. Yeah. yeah. And we don't have any any hole. No hole. May, probably not an acceptable weld on a car. No penetration, right? No penetration. So this is the same material, same welder settings. Same welder, I just same material. changed the way I welded it. Technique. Yeah. Technique. Spoke I concentrated it. more on the center of the hole. I can feel it. You can feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can definitely get more material in there. And you definitely see how the back side of this one. We have a nice hole oh, yeah. on the back when in comparison to the other one. Really nice hole back there. Really good tear out. Mm -hmm. As a manager, I can't really go out there and destructively test these welds. How would I know our technicians are doing this? That's just this thing. I mean, uh, we don't know just walking through the shop as a manager whether your technicians are producing good welds or bad welds. That's where our welding training and certification come, comes into play. You can train your technicians and you can have that, that that peace of mind that, yes, your, your technicians have the knowledge, not just to only identify correct and incorrect welds, but also test their own welds and set up their machines properly. We actually go into the shop, train the technician on their welder, using the techniques that Brian spoke about, but with their welder. So I've heard it takes from anywhere from four hours, sometimes the whole day. Um, what, tell me a little bit about your experiences with that, because there's also not just this weld, there's several others, aren't there? Yes, we have nine other welds that, that we also do in our welding training and certification program. And within those nine welds, we have a fillet joint, a butt joint with backing, common welds that are within the industry. And our welding instructors, they go into a shop on a one, maybe on a one-on-one -on -one or a three-on-one, -on -one, depending on how many technicians are being tested that day. And we work with them on each individual weld, just based upon where they can improve in their technique, machine setup, what to look for on a heat mark, uh, you know, things that they're lacking in their knowledge base. Now we, we emphasize the stuff they already know, but we build upon what they don't know. And so when, when we walk out of the shop, they have a better understanding of welding and then they, they will know how to destructive test their own welds and they'll see how important it is to destructive test their own welds. This weld, the reason why I chose this weld, because this is a common weld that when we go into our welding and training certifications in the shop, this is one where they have difficulty and it's all about technique on how you weld it, not really machine settings. Uh, we, we know that there's about 10% of the industry that has had some type of formal welding training. So our goal is to make sure that we bring that to every technician, have the welding training done by a technician like Brian. We go out to your shop, spend some time, spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you, show you how to adjust your welders, and um, hopefully we can all achieve the complete safe repair.